Hello everyone and welcome back to The Wrap. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. And I'm your co-host again this week, Deanna Norris. Today we'll be talking with our friends in Michigan Medicine Security who recently unveiled a new training program aimed at helping people who are working in home health care settings. Now before we have that discussion, be sure you take some of your time at home to catch up on any episode of The Wrap you may have missed. You can find the shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. New episodes debut weekly and can also be found as part of the Headlines Week in Review and on the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel. With that, let's bring in Michigan Medicine's lead police officer, Theo Chalianas, and DPSS Deputy Director and Director of Michigan Medicine Security, Brian Urich. Theo and Brian, thanks so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Dan. So you're here today to talk about the new REACT training. Can you share with our audience what REACT stands for and provide just a brief overview of the program? Uh, certainly. Uh, basically, REACT stands for Rapid Environmental Assessment Control Training. And the training was designed specifically for post-acute care members here at Michigan Medicine. And the training really consists of a three-part curriculum where we teach situational awareness. And then we take the students through various scenarios to build on those types of uh, premises. And then we also take them through what's called Milo, which is a bit, and you went through it, obviously, the, a video training system to help put them in those types of scenarios. So where did the idea come from to create a safety training for employees who provide home health services? Well, Brian and I and our staff, we, we find training so very important, and we realize it's not just one type of training in the classroom. Um, Brian identified um, home care as, as a major forward movement, and we wanted to figure out how can we take situational awareness, personal safety, and put it into reality-based training and apply it to home health care in this situation. So as Brian mentioned, um, Dan and I were both able to attend the training last month, and thank you for that. We, we really had a great experience that day. Um, one thing that we found interesting was the information you shared about the prevalence of workplace violence in the healthcare setting. Can you talk about that a little bit, not to cause fear, but to help our employees understand the importance of security and safety? Uh, so that's a great question, and it's, it's amazing because the majority of people don't even know these statistics. So 75% of all violence that occurs in any workplace occurs in a healthcare setting, 75%. And we know that only 26% of our clinical staff ever report that level of violence. So not only do we know there's a huge problem with violence in healthcare, but we know that it's very underreported. Another thing with the... Um the workplace violence in the healthcare setting, we get different levels of response, different levels of comfort. And frankly, some people are paranoid and some people are prepared. And when what we like to end with is when someone says, what can we do? What should we do? We'd like to remind them to raise their situational and awareness, wherever that level is, to think about safety, to have a plan and to share with each other. Um, it does not need to rise to any um, scary or paranoia level, but if they raise where they are and they make a plan with their coworkers, they will be more prepared and that mindset will help keep them safe and their patients and anyone they're working with. Yeah, and that actually reminds me a lot about the quote, Brian, I know that you said during the training that you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to the level of training. Can you explain that a little bit? It is so true. It, it was that that quote came from a philosopher then was adopted by a Navy SEAL. And what it basically says is that we need to prepare ourselves both mentally and physically for these types of very rare events so that in the highly unlikely event that they do occur, we are prepared to be able to respond. What we want to be able to do is have a mental plan so that in the event it happens, we simply react versus what happens in some cases where we just freeze because we're overloaded with that stimulus. Yeah. Now, is this REACT training modeled after other safety programs? This is actually, this was a first of, a, first of its kind program in that this is the first time we've ever partnered with nurse educators and DPSS to co-instruct and create 
the training program. So that's what make, makes this unique. It was actually modeled after several different training programs that are used in law enforcement, that are used in the military, and that are used here at Michigan Medicine, which is our well de-escalation program. And basically what we did is we combined elements from each one of those training modules, and that's really how REACT was born. So Brian, you talked a little bit there about the partners at Michigan Medicine that helped to create and are helping to instruct the program. Can you talk a little bit more about how the program was developed? And you know, one of the things I thought was really interesting was the ride-alongs that your officers did with the home health care providers. That's a great segue, Deanna, and, and thank you for that. Um, it, in true partnership, uh, both parties, both entities are involved. And we did that even before the training started with those ride-alongs. Each one of us involved with this REACT training did a ride-along or multiple ride-alongs. So we got firsthand experience um, both in the vehicle, the communication, where the safety is now, the actual home visits where we went in the homes with the home care clinicians educating us. Once we were done or as we were finishing up, we got additional information from those um, staff members that we implemented into the training. So that's how it began. And as we developed the training, we, we received feedback and input from nurse educators. So crafting that was a true partnership. And one of the things we like to do is making the training as realistic as possible so we don't ever have to say, pretend that or imagine that so-and-so is there. It was very realistic from the crawl, walk, run stages. And the final product, again, was a true partnership. And that's... Um, and we continue to receive feedback from the participants so that we can continue to fine tune and make it the most realistic and safe as possible. And uh, one other ironic thing is that where we conducted, remember if you, we had done, we had did them in uh, apartment complexes, some of the, the, the students, the healthcare workers had actually done home healthcare visits in those actual apartments. So it really helped with the realism because when we were, if you recall doing the, uh, during the debrief, they were able to bring that forward. So it really helped out. Yeah. So what are the next steps for this training? When will it be offered again? Well, right now what we're doing, now we have to figure out, okay, we need to make this scalable. We need to determine a way to be able to, to deliver this to all members of post-acute care. And how do we do that? How can we make a curriculum that's perhaps not four hours, perhaps it's two hours? And how do we do that on a regular basis? So, and actually this, to your credit, uh, because of your article, I had multiple people reach out, send me emails saying, hey, I want this training. When can I get this training? So uh, really that all came about from, from your article. So yeah, our next steps will be to develop a plan to put this into an annual training program for all post-acute care. That sounds great, Brian. And again, we really appreciated the opportunity to learn more about the program and to actually participate in it. Um, what other initiatives or programs is security planning for the near future? So consistent with uh, many of our trainings, in fact, all of our trainings, there's very similar messages about situational awareness, about our DPSS resources, about partnering. So that's going to establish the core of the classroom, if you will, or, or the basis of the class. But in addition, it's going to be specialized toward maybe psychiatric emergency services or something pertaining to MOT. So we're going to take that base model, but then take input from the stakeholders in those areas and create training and go to their areas, their workplace to make it applicable to their areas, not just so that they're comfortable, but again, so it's the most realistic possible and they can be prepared in the best ways. So we're looking to branch out and whoever wants to partner with us and to grow in that way and to be flexible to um, receive any type of information and progressive um, developments that we have not thought about. One of the other, uh, we've had some people reach out that we have a lot of students who travel overseas and they are now asking for what, what type of situational awareness and prevention training can you give me to keep myself safe when I'm overseas? So we're actually developing that as well. The idea is let's, let's be able to provide unique training for every part of Michigan medicine and or every part of University of Michigan. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you so much, Brian and Theo, for sharing insight into the REACT training and all these other programs that your teams are working on. If you want to learn more about this exercise and check out a photo gallery from that day, go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org.
Okay, it's time for the lightning round where we ask our guests four quick fire questions. And Brian, apparently you lost in a game of musical chairs that you didn't know you were playing. <laughs> so you are in the hot seat. Are you ready to go? I'm a little nervous because I don't know for the everyone who's listening. I actually really don't know what the four questions are. So it's actually when you said that a minute ago, I actually got a little nervous. So. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Now, you had decades of experience as a police officer before coming to Michigan Medicine. What is one thing you learned from your past that has helped you the most in your current role? The importance of building relationships and trust. I, I just can't. And, and I, I know I always sound like a broken record. It's one thing to make sure that our staff are safe. It's a whole other thing to make sure that our staff feel safe. And the only way you can do that is to treat our healthcare system like a community and treat every floor as a neighborhood and build those relationships, build trust so that you can prevent problems before they occur. That's such a great message. So uh, Brian, if you could hold one job that had nothing at all to do with security or law enforcement, what would it be? Oh, I would absolutely be a helicopter pilot nice. for survival flight. That sounds awesome. Very cool choice. <laughs> yeah. I, they've not invited me though. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Totally unrelated. Halloween is coming on Sunday. Now I assume it's been a while since you dressed up, but what's the best costume you've ever worn? Oh, the best costume that I was... Oh, um, you know, I can, I'm going to date myself here, but I went as the bionic man, Steve Austin, and a lot of people aren't even going to remember who that is. And, uh, but I remember playing it on the floor and I would even go, dit, 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 dit. And some people will remember, Deanna might remember that actual, that noise oh, yeah. that some of your viewers are. I don't know what you're that. saying about Deanna, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, that I'm not so offended. I'm sorry. No worries. <laughs> Well, Deanne, Deanne and I both knew each other, or at least come from Kalamazoo, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. And in keeping with the Halloween spirit, if you had to eat a certain type of candy every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, there is no doubt. It would be a Chuckles. And a lot of people don't remember what those are. But if you remember the, the square licorice, there's six of them or five of them in a pack. And they're black, yellow, red, and green, I think, and one other color. And... I don't even know if they're sold anymore, but chuckles are by far the best candy there is. That is a unique Absolutely. choice. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that's my that's my mom's favorite too, Brian. And it is a challenge to find them now. It is. Okay, see, so there is someone that knows about chuckles. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Brian, uh, for for sharing this information, for sharing the information about the React training as well. Uh, once again, if you want to learn more about the React training that we discussed today, go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. And while you're there, check out our other featured stories from this past week. For instance, readers learned about how colleagues are working to care for pets of inpatients during hospital stays. A team shared how they're caring for younger cancer patients. And faculty and staff were recognized for making a difference last month. Find all that and more at mmheadlines.org. All right, Deanna, now that pet story made me curious. Are you an animal person? And if so, how many pets do you have at home? Uh, so I am a huge dog lover and <clears throat> we have two dogs at home. We have a very sweet eight-year-old named Mia and a little two-year-old named Finn and uh, the saying terrible twos <laughs> applies to dogs too, <laughs> apparently. So how about you, Dan? Yeah, so I have a little white ball of fluff, Brady. I'm sure he's made a cameo on this podcast in the past, uh, just barking at landscaping or whoever happens to go by uh, the terrible twos. I don't know about that. He's probably in about the terrible tens at this point. We've just decided that uh, well, he's never going to learn. We've tried training. We've tried everything. He just, you know, he just wants to make his voice heard at, at all times. But but we love him. And uh, yeah, he he's the first pet I've ever had. I didn't grow up with any pets. Um, so we, we love our little Brady. And, uh, you know, he just he's, he's lazy as heck, but but you know, he'll show love when he has to, so. Uh, sounds very sweet. Yeah. All right, um, so it's time for the weekly trivia question. And last week we asked listeners, what is the name of the new tool to help employees analyze their benefits choices during open enrollment? The answer is Benefits Mentor. Congratulations to Denise Alton who sent in the correct answer. And now for this week's question, here's Dan. All right, this week's question is, 
What is the name of the new program that is assisting younger cancer patients at Michigan Medicine? Once again, what is the name of the new program that is assisting younger cancer patients at Michigan Medicine? You can find the answer in this week's headline story, and once you know it, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for the chance to win a prize. And that's all the time we have for this week. Theo and Brian, thank you again so much for joining us. And thanks, as always, to our listeners and viewers for everything you do for our patients, for our families, and for each other. We'll see you next week.